What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Whatnots Review Show. This is episode 72, uh, and this week we are going to be talking about Hip Hop Family Tree Volume 1. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this one. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined, as always, by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, yeah. how are you doing I'm, today? I'm good, Kyle. How have you been this week? I, I slept really well last night, and I did good. not want to wake up this morning. It was fantastic. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but we, we have some new things in our studio we here. Do. I have a new bookshelf. Uh, like I've been planning on getting for a long time. We sold the ugly futon that was sitting next oh. to the hummy. Well, actually, we haven't sold it yet. We were, and it fell through like twice. <clears throat> uh, and so it's just sitting downstairs, taking up space. But I was mm. like, you know, I'm just going to buy this bookshelf. Go for a it. Anyways. Uh, so... Step one of studio redo thing is happening now. So <laughs> it has both yeah. Power Rangers action figures and Street Sharks action figures. Yes, and other guys I can't see real well. Uh, I I have Jesus in a Pokeball. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, oh, you know, I've got Cable and Gambit. <laughs> I I I have uh, Hugh Jackman Wolverine. From Good. the original X Men film, I also have Sabretooth from that oh. X Men film. I have uh, Spider Man two thousand ninety nine and mm. Spider Man from the Torment uh, comic book series. So he's fighting the lizard, and his suit is all torn up. Oh, so fun stuff <laughs> and then of course all of my comic books and stuff like that so it's, it's so many comic books yeah. they look all nice and crisp and pristine yeah or at least that's all of my graphic <laughs> novels because i have like six full long boxes of single issues <laughs> so it's this times like three <laughs> Oof. uh but yeah so we are back uh, for a new episode of the review show, this time it's going to be two white people talking about hip hop. It's going to be great. Yes. What can go wrong? <laughs> no. Uh, so we a, a, a long time ago, I think I mentioned something either about this or something else. And of course, you were like, Kyle, I know nothing about hip hop. Yeah. And I, I was like, Filch. Melissa. I love hip hop. It is it is my preferred genre of music. I uh, I used to do graf graffiti. I got suspended for it in high school. Uh, I used to I used to b boy. I used to dance. I used to make beats. All of this stuff. I I fucking love hip hop. Um, you you did all of that, and I. I listen to Christmas and Hollis every Christmas. There you and go. That's where I'm coming from. <laughs> that's it. There you go. Well, now you you have a new Christmas <laughs> song <laughs> to listen to. <laughs> um, so we're 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 gonna be talking about Hip Hop Family Tree Volume One by Ed Piscor. Uh, he wrote it. He did the art. He did the coloring. The lettering. He did all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and as I was rating this, I was like, oh, yeah, I know there are a couple playlists out there. And I think it, it, in the back of the book, yeah. it, 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 it even has all of the like, here's a bunch of the songs that yeah, we the mentioned. But it's it's not necessarily exhaustive. So I I tried my my best. I was like, I'm just going to make a playlist for myself to see if I can... I, I, I can make one that has stuff from everyone it mentions mm -hmm. when they mention them, like in chronological. So, you, so you can basically read the book and just hit next. It's like, oh, that's a song from C C Curtis B B B B Below. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they mention him right here. There you go. Um, so I, I, I did that and I shared that with you. I'm not sure if how much you got to. I I didn't get through very much it. of it because you sent me this just yesterday yeah. afternoon. But I got started on it and I'm I'm very glad to have it. Thanks yeah. for putting all that together. Yeah. Um. So you, I'm I'm sure you guys can find that stuff on Spotify mm -hmm. if you just type in hip hop family 
tree. There's like four of them that pop up. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing what you thought of this book because you're you're starting from square one. You, I, I, I feel like it's almost safe to say you know next to nothing. I was I recognized some of the names mm -hmm. and I knew that Rapper's Delight the song was was a thing. Yeah, the big early one, you know, the the grandfather of this in the wider musical world. Like that's kind of what introduced most people to hip hop outside of this little culture in New York City where it was sure. growing up. So that's all I knew getting into this. Okay. So yeah, it was very it was very educating. Like, this is a very valuable book. Yeah. I, I liked reading it. Yeah, it's d very different than anything else I've ever read because it is just a straight nonfiction lesson. Like, there's almost yeah. no dramatization. There's no narrative. It jumps around a lot. It is just plain history. Yeah, which might be my only nitpick with mm -hmm. the book, but... Yeah, it does a fantastic job. Ja, 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 ja. I, th I think once once you get into it, because it, 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 it does like immediately start with like, all right, this date, here we go. Here's yeah. what ha happened. Um, but I, I think w once you kind of get used to that format, then then you start to see like, okay, these guys are over here. This is happening. This is yeah. happening. And then they move this way. And, you know, it, it all starts to, to come together. Um, and yeah, it's 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 a fun fun little read because it, it also looks like like old school comics yeah. from the seventies, which is neat. Um, and I I don't own them yet, but they they make these nice like oversized versions of of these, and they're just these big huge comics that I, nice. I really want to get. Uh, and I think they have like the first four volumes in like a big box set thing. So I might get that one day. Cool. Uh, well, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, here on the review show, we pick a different story to talk about each week. Could be comic book, could be a a a a anime, movie, TV show, something, mm -hmm. who knows. We, re we read it, we watch it, we do what we have to do. We come back here and talk about it. Uh, so the, 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 the general synopsis of this book is basically just the first 10 years yes. of hip hop, <laughs> uh, which is kind of why I waited to pitch it to now episode 72. Cause that was around the time oh, when it, yeah. it, got, it got started. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I only pitched the first volume of this cause it is very d -d dense. There's a it lot does. of names. It a takes a dates. long time to read. Like, I'd be sitting, I read most of this in a marathon yesterday because I just didn't have anything to do with my Saturday. So mm -hmm. it's like, I'll block this out and I'll just take care of all the reading at once, especially because I knew it was going to be dense with information. I'm like, I can't right. read this periodically throughout the week. I will forget everything from one day to the next. I do have to cram this one. And I'm sitting there reading it and I feel like I've been there for. 40 minutes and then i look and i've only read 10 more pages <laughs> right it's like you're on page nine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly um but but yeah i i i i do think it's a really fun yeah read it's it's interesting to see all, 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 all of that come to get get together uh, I do want to mention, mm -hmm. uh, so the dates on this first volume are from the 1970s to 1981, basically mm -hmm. covering nine or ten years. Volume two covers 1981 to 1983. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, then volume three is 83 to 84. Huh. And uh, volume four is eighty four to eighty five. Uh, wow. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's a volume five. Let me see. Do they have a volume five out yet? I guess not, not yet. Um, but yeah, it's it's so even with just that, that you can see how like okay things are starting to pick up pace, but then yeah, once the eighties hit, it's an explosion, and it's just like all right, we're there's enough stuff to just 
cover one year of stuff within this. Um, so I, I, I think that is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, any other kind of thoughts? I, I, I guess I could go a li- little bit deeper into the synopsis of how. Yeah, this isn't started, like because but... this is all nonfiction. We can't really spoil it. Not so really. much. Yeah. Like we don't have our usual let's give general thoughts and then a spoiler break to talk about the complete narrative because it's like you know or we wouldn't be here today. Right. <laughs> um so yeah, it starts basically with cool Herc and his parties mm-hmm. uh and then it makes its way to Grandmaster Flash and Africa Bombada uh, up to, yeah, you, you mentioned rappers Delight and how that all got mm-hmm. started. Uh, and then just, yeah, to them, like, starting to press records and being like, hey, you, you, you can actually c- kind of make some money off of this thing. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, and, and then it, it ends kind of right as hip hop is just starting to hit the like major news mm-hmm. circuits and stuff it's starting to be on soul train and on yeah. news stations and stuff like that um actually actually w- w- one of the options that i pitched l- l- last week that we could have been d- 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 doing was a movie called wild style is that the movie that the guys trying to put together in the book okay it is because it never yeah. gets far enough along in the scope that this book takes place where he actually, like, makes it or even names the project he's working on. Yeah, so they're they're working on this m- m- movie. They don't know what to call it yet, um, but it's it's directed and produced by Charlie A. Hearn. Uh, Fab f- Five f- f- Freddy is, mm-hmm. is in the f- film. It stars Lee Kionis, which was the... Uh, other graffiti artists yeah and and that so it's neat to be like hey even in this one thing you can kind of see how that movie got started yeah which is neat so i highly recommend this especially if you are wanting to learn some more (laughs) hip-hop history and just to see what it's all about i think it is a very valuable book to have there. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Uh, I guess a little bit of housekeeping, and then mm-hmm. we'll get into our, like, spoiler territory uh, stuff if if you are uh, completely unawares of what happens. Uh, last week, we covered a movie, a sci-fi horror film called Annihilation. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was something that you pitched, Melissa. Yeah, because I was really struck by the the visuals of the trailer and the eerie atmosphere of the whole thing. And I yeah. decided it was fine. And you also helped decide you picked the thing. It's time to watch this movie. What is it? What's in there? And it is a really beautiful, eerie sci-fi tale about this meteor that hits a lighthouse on the coast of Florida and it just m- distorts and morphs and mutates the entire landscape around yeah. it. And then the people go in there and they get morphed too. Exactly. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Kind of creepy too. It's, yes. It's, it's sci-fi horror, but I don't really feel like it's horror. There are some horrific things mm-hmm. in, in there, but it's more like... It's not a horror yeah. film. It yeah, it's more like, like the exorcism the, of Emily Rose. Yeah, it's like the creepiest sci-fi movie you've ever seen. A little bit more than it is a sci-fi horror movie. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We just recorded a new episode of The Captain's Log as mm-hmm. well. That's one of our other podcasts. Uh, it was me and Jess Beaver you you were I, f- I forget what you had but you you went to go <laughs> do something else it was just me and my parents were out of town and the tradition oh, right. every time night. my parents go out of town is that my friend and I go watch a movie on my dad's big screen TV and this was the one night they were going to be gone so i i called off this to what go did watch, you watch Blade Runner 2049 there you go 
because we'd stockpile the really visually dazzling movies for when my parents go out of town. Because that TV, it's like 60 inches. He's got a sound bar. Like it's a really, really nice setup (laughs) that we just have to steal whenever they're not there. So uh, me and Jess got to talk a little bit about her camping trip Ah. and stuff like that, uh, as well as some of the very, very first breaking news coming out of D23. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is a lot more of it that we did not get to talk about. So, Melissa, I'm counting on you uh, to be our Disney expert. Oh, I I watched like half an hour of panel footage already this morning just on my own. Right. (laughs) So I've got you. We, we mentioned the early Marvel stuff, and then we briefly talked about the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if, if you guys want to hear a little bit about that, go go check out the Captain's Log, which is one of our other podcasts. Uh, speaking of other podcasts, we also have the Reactor Core, yeah. uh, which uh, we don't have a necessarily new episode on there but a c- couple weeks ago we talked about the netflix show money heist mm-hmm. on, on there so you guys should go check out that stuff uh that being said i say we get on to spoilers and stuff and start talking about hip-hop family spoilers tree, yeah Big spoilers finger for quotes. real history right <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. We are in spoiler territory officially. <laughs> uh, so if if you guys haven't read the book yet and you want to go read that first, uh, you guys should go do that now uh, and then come back because we'll be, we'll be here. We'll we be will. Here. Doing our Going thing. anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, d- d- did you want to just start at square one and kind of work our way up or d- was there something that j- 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 jumped out at you? I have a question for you. Yes. This might be a dumb question. Okay. So throughout the book, there will be characters wearing like a sweatshirt with their name on it. Is that purely an artistic choice to help you keep everybody straight? Or was that legitimately what people were wearing at the time? Do you I know? Would, I would say yes and no. I, I okay. feel like it's a little bit of both. I think mainly it's an artistic thing uh just to be like oh if we don't name the character at least you yeah. can see what their name is written on on the thing because there, there, mm-hmm. there are there is a lot of people so in many people this, and it's hard to be like okay who's that again you know um but i think i think the book does a great job of for the most part keeping things like all right here's these people let's name yeah. them all again or yeah they have their n- names on their shirt but i i would imagine it wouldn't be that f- far off to like wear these shirts with your name on them when you're doing these parties and stuff like yeah. that to be like hey this is my brand i i am grandmaster flash i i i am you know whoever else right yeah it, like yeah i i wouldn't put it past them i oh. kind of want a sweatshirt with my name on it right um, <laughs> so one of the, the so the third thing that i, I pitched this week was i i was gonna be it's gonna be we're gonna teach melissa hip-hop something. it was it was time i learned like i think i mentioned last week i went to a trivia night recently and i'm getting good at trivia i'm consistently like real high up there but there was a question where the answer was easy e and i'm like ah uh, uh. <laughs> nwa um so which which he's not mentioned in this book no I, I, it's I, several I years think. in the future um but and he's also on the opposite end of the country from yeah the yeah this is, is all this is all in new york Mm-hmm. Like there's a couple panels. It's like, and then that tape is heard by a kid who lives in California, and mm-hmm. the kid is Dr. Dre, yep. <laughs> something like that. Like once or twice they break in and do that, or there's like a guy who's from New York, but he's like at school in Detroit, so he's doing this thing in Detroit, but then he comes back mm-hmm. to New York. But for the most part, yes, it is all right there, New York, New Jersey. Yeah, a little bit. Um. 
so the the three things I pitched was this book, Wild Style, and then the hip hop or the I was gonna say the hip hop original series, <laughs> the Netflix original series, the Get Dead da- 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 Down, which is a mm-hmm. fictional tale that kind of takes place during all of this stuff, um, and Grandmaster F- 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 Flash is is in that. Sh- in that show and he plays himself himself mm. uh, which is neat um but yeah so let's let's c- kind of start at the beginning i I, okay. I guess they mentioned cool herc uh, yes and how he would do all of these parties at 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 the rec room and cedric avenue um one of the things he would also do is he would ride around in his car with his speakers in the back seat and he would just be blasting music um so he he was like like his his parties were like the event like the thing to go go to and that's that that's how hip-hop got started it was this like social thing like that hey let's get to gather let's party let's share m- 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 music let's meet mm-hmm. let's network let's do this do that and it, it was this big social thing right um yeah and it like it to, to me it's just it's fascinating to see how that it got started and he just you know, you know, like it, it's it's him you know, noticing hey when i play certain songs or certain parts of songs yeah. they react in certain ways can i like make that longer how 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 how, how can i make that last he's like what if i buy two of the records and when it plays on one record i'll switch the cross fader to the other one and start that one at the same t- time and then go back and forth and forth and forth and it's like and that that's how it starts it's just like, <laughs> I, that, that's fascinating yeah um so like what did what, what did you, you think of like the early stuff that it was mentioning there from cole herc to grandmaster flash to them just taking power from the street lights <laughs> that was neat i i do like that it kind of started not really on accident but like it was designed to be an in-person thing yeah. like when people start wanting to make these into records the artists were like no this is meant to happen live yeah it completely loses the effect if you put it on a record and the couple songs i listened to off that playlist you sent me have a lot of this crowd noise in it. Mm-hmm. Like they brought people into the studio to like clap and cheer and like kind of distantly sing the song in the background. Yeah. So I like that communal homegrown vibe that's around everything. And one of my favorite, I can't really call it a plot point because it is history. Sure. But when that blackout hits New York, yeah. everybody goes looting, which was a historical fact I knew. But that is what evens the playing field. It's not just like really three does, guys yeah. that have the top of the line equipment. Now that the power is out and everybody is looting, everybody can go get that same equipment. Isn't that amazing? I love it. Yeah, which is also one of the plot points in the Get Dead Down. That's how they get yeah. their stuff, right? That blackout happens and they're like, this is our time. Let's do this. Let's go find some stuff. <laughs> I also really like the origin of the term hip hop itself, where there's mm-hmm. that neighborhood kid, Billy, who's enlisted in the army and everybody's really happy for them and they're throwing him this goodbye party. And it's also kind of the same regular big music parties they usually have, but they want to remind people, no, this is for Billy. Like we're here to honor Billy. So like every half an hour as new people come in, we're going to do this skit. And it starts with them kind of mocking the like army left, march, right, like left, left right, right yeah. hip hop, hip hop. And then they all shout Billy. Billy. <laughs> and it's, it's sweet. <laughs> That's where hip hop comes from. Is this like, jokey little skit meant right. to honor their future army buddy it's it's still a little bit disputed if, yeah if, I if that, see that is the exact thing because there's there's people who are like oh i came up with the ter- ter- term and it was this <laughs> and that um 
I, 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 I think my favorite interpretation, I, I believe, comes from KRS One, where it, 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 it is this, it, it's, 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 it's a mix of if you are hip to something, you are knowledgeable, right? Hip hop yes. is about spreading knowledge and self awareness yeah. and community and gig 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 engagement. Yes. I'm just like, hey, how can we improve our situation? We need to be knowledgeable, so you 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 have to be hip. But there is this movement to to it. There is this hop. Um, so that's not the like that's how it got started. But it mm-hmm. it, it is this at least in my mind this nice in in t- interpretation yes. of what the meaning behind it is. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, it just it's all these like real simple party. St- it just it just kind of happened. And it it's almost this gray area of how it exactly got mm-hmm. started. Um, one of the things that they they kind of touched on, but they didn't go into detail, is that Grandmaster Frelash, uh, when when he bought records, he would mark on the on the records themselves with a crayon where certain parts were on the record so he could scratch them and do all sorts of stuff but then when he wanted to get back to to it he he knew exactly where that one part was so then he could also in you know keep going back and could loop the beat and stuff like that and isn't it, is it African Bombada that would take the labels off the records and switch them around that was as a cool herc? Okay, okay. Yeah. Who, just to like get other people off his tail. Just like, mm, I know you're watching me and I know you're trying to get the same stuff I have for your own parties. Yeah. <laughs> Let me like, dislabel nope. everything. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is fantastic, right? And I'm sure he has a code like, oh, if it's th- th- this song, then it's actually this one song, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, I mean that that was the idea. It was supposed to be this live party, this e- 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 this event, and if if like you you wanted yours to be the best. Right. Yes. And so that was his defense of being like, well, if they don't know what records I'm actually playing, then they won't have th- their their parties won't be the same. Right. Mm-hmm. And so to be a good DJ, you had to go looking for these records of just to to find that like four second sample. Right. Yes. And then you'll be like, I'll take two. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um. And 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 then yeah, d- 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 down the road, I don't think they 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 mentioned chopping up stuff and sampling it and 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 st- and stuff like that. But then the idea is like once they started to get used to the idea of pressing their own records, mm-hmm. then that's when sampling really started to take effect. It's like okay, yeah. now I can just get this one sample off of this r- r- record and just loop that one thing and make my own new r- 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 record that just has that four second loop, you know, g- 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 going in de- 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 indefinitely. And that's the, 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 the beat for this, this mm-hmm. new song. And then maybe we'll add a bass guitar on top of that. And then the sound of a party on top of that. Yeah. And then th- this, and that, and they make this, this, collage of the, you know, of this new stuff right so but there still is the like hey if you kind of actually want to make your own record yes there's <laughs> copyrights involved with all of yeah. this stuff so <laughs> that's part of the struggle is that like there's a, a record shop owner there's a couple local businessmen who like want i want to make this a record i want to make what you do a record because people love it people would buy it because not everybody can get into the parties Mm -hmm. and it's like oh you have no original music yeah we have to make original music for you to do the same stuff over yeah it it was just it originally started as hey my parents have a a record player let's make our own speakers and do that stuff and then we'll just play the cool records of the day but then to keep the party entertained they had to have someone be like all right everybody over here how you doing Ah, (laughs) 
you know and that's how it got just started and it's just i i, I don't know it's it's fascinating to me mm-hmm. um let's see what did i want to talk about next so did let me ask you this did did, did you have a favorite it's strange to call them characters. Characters. Did, did, did you have a favorite p- person that you liked when they were in the comic? Because it, it kind of j- 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 jumps around a bit, but it goes back to certain characters multiple times. I just kept waiting for Run DMC to be Run DMC because, like, as a lay person, that was the oldest thing them. I was familiar with. So it's like... Oh, it's like watching Solo, and you're like, when does he meet Chewbacca? Right? <laughs> like, I, like, and, like, the two kids are there, and, like, they've got, like, it's going to start happening, like, but this book does not in. get there yet. <laughs> Coach, put me on some records. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, the, yeah, Sam, I, I, I know I, those guys. I want to see the guys I know. I think that has to be one of my favorite parts of, yeah. of like, this through la 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 line of dj run run when he's really young and he's just like he's so enthusiastic like man i want to do what you do they're like no Mm -hmm. go go to college first right um and he's just like oh man but like i can do this and and you can see him sometimes in the back there they mentioned that he was the dj at some of these parties and stuff like that but yeah it's just like if 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 you read this book and started like googling who these p- people were, you're like, oh, that's the guy who 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 starts yeah. running DMC, and then it has this line of he's just like, put me in, coach, yeah. I can do it, I can do it, I know I can. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is, I I yeah, that that has to be one of my favorite p- p- parts. I think my my second favorite part though is just how rappers delight yeah get started like i i had heard that 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 song but i had no idea how it happened like how mm-hmm. it got started and it's kind of fucked up but it's mm-hmm. it's amazing to, to, to just like he's just in a pizza shop doing his thing yeah and uh what was her name sylvia robinson yeah i believe she like <laughs> hears that and i was like hey this hip hop stuff, I I kind of want to make a record with this. Do you happen to know anyone who does this stuff? And um, oh god, why am I forgetting his his name there? Uh, was it Mike something? Let me see here. Um, let's see where can I? You might be on it? your own here. I kind of I gave up my own. Someone out to there is screaming at, at at me. Yeah, like, you dumb white people. God damn, why don't you know this stuff? <laughs> Um, let's see. I'm gonna look in the comic it, itself and see. It if is I can a find lot, a pages. lot of. There are probably in this. The graphic novel is 114 pages. If you take out like mm-hmm. supplementary material, it's like what you know, a little bit more than a hundred. In those hundred pages, you are probably given 200 names. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's so so dense. Um, let's see. No, that's too far down. Let's see. What page am I on right now? Browse pages. I'm on page 48. Yeah, it's like, oh, man, that this was like three years ago when this thing happened. Let's see if we can find. Yeah, and like, I'm I'm glad the story is that dense. I'm glad it's so comprehensive and all of these people get to be included in it. Yeah. But like, I knew... I am going to get 10% of the story on my first read. Yeah. Like, I would probably have to read this over and over again to, like, get it. It it definitely helps to kind of be familiar with the music. Yeah. Right? Um, Okay, so I'm finding the scene. Big Bank Hank. Ah, That's his name. What a good name. There we go. Working at the pizza shop. Making Big Bank at the pizza shop, right? (laughs) Um. Yeah, so I mean, like he he's kind of just d- 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 doing his thing, but then he borrows the rhyme book from someone else, and he uses th- th- those to to make uh to make the the so- song, and it's just like, yo, that's fucked up. But like yeah. he he's he's still someone else's rhymes. 
uh, and got big off of it. Which, which is, yeah, it, I mean, that's a, that's a thing that happens, especially back, back then. Yeah, it was so, it was so rough and like, there was no kind of structure to anything yet. Like it right. was still figuring out like what it was and like what anybody owns and like what you can kind of borrow and adapt and what really belongs to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let me see. Let me see if I can find more of the... There we go. There's more of the stuff. Um, yeah, he borrows the, the rhyme book. And they make the but, the... but yeah, they're just like sitting in the ca 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 car rapping. And more and more people come up and like, hey, I can rap too. too. She's and, like, "Yep, hop on in." Yeah, hop on it, and that's how uh, that's how they get stu started. Um, it's wild. Do you? This is one piece of, I guess you could call it hip hop trivia that I do know. That classic pattern of, um, <laughs> my name is blank, and I'm here to say. Mm -hmm something something in a major way yeah what that actually comes from that specific when people do that now the specific thing like it tra it traces back to what everybody is pulling from is a fruity pebbles commercial where yeah. barney says my name is barney rubble and i'm here to say i like fruity pebbles in a major way it could have <laughs> been cocoa pebbles that part i don't remember but like it was a serial commercial that was parroting this new hip hop style at the time, something from like the mid to late eighties or something, they did this commercial. And so it's something like hip hop, but like that phrase, that's, right? that's, that's a Barney rubble original. <laughs> My name is Barney rubble. And I'm here to say, I like yeah, man. this cereal in a major way. Cause that's, that, that, that's what they were. I mean, like these people were mostly kids, right? Mm -hmm. They were, they were 16 to 20 something year old yeah. kids. There's that we're one um making this up. Is it Busy B Starsky whose mom like has yeah. him on a curfew? Yeah. And like time is kind of amorphous in this book. It doesn't give you very many like it's this year. It's this year. It's this year. But it feels like for the entire book he's still under this curfew. And I'm like how young are you? How much time has passed? These are just kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, it's ridiculous. So, uh, what I was, I was going to say one more thing about the Sugar Hill g g g g g g gang. Now I forget what it was. And the record label's called Sugar Hill Records, and it's really, like, mm -hmm. designed to be this product. Yeah. Like, Sylvia Robinson so. didn't go out there and, like, find something. She, like, kind of took all these little pieces and created, uh, this is a hip-hop I put record one, this is one yeah. for the record, yeah. Yeah, so crazy stuff. I don't remember what I was going to say with that, so let's move on. Uh, besides Run DMC, there are a number of other people who, yeah, it kind of mentions, but then d doesn't go into it yet because it's not their time yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we see Dr. Dre. Uh, we see Chuck D. Um we see, so th there was the Kangol crew, mm -hmm. uh, which has Dana Dane, and then I think it was uh, Cool Rick D is who he was going by back then. Cool Rick D turns out to be Slick Rick uh -huh. later on. Um, and so, yeah, they have stuff like that. They have, uh, I, I guess we see a lot more of Rush Simmons. Because he's mm -hmm. the one kind of producing that. But then you see Rick Rubin when he's yes. a young kid. Uh, and he's he's a super famous p p producer. He's responsible for the Beastie Boys and for p putting on J J Jay-Z and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but w when he eventually meets 
Rush Simmons, they get to g- 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 together to create Def Jam for mm. records, which is then how Dr. Jure get started and all of that 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 stuff. So it's it, like you you see these people in their own like separate yeah. corners, and you're like, oh, one day you guys are gonna make magic. It's gonna be yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, like I could tell something. Like there's a lot of names I recognize. There's certain historical events that I know happened, but like mm-hmm. I don't know what it takes to get there. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like this is. I feel like I'm watching the second movie in a very long series and I've never seen any other movie in the series. And like, I know you're somebody and something <laughs> you're going to get that rock. And I know the rock goes in a glove and <laughs> like, right. <laughs> like, this is part of a lore that I've only heard about. This is like what it's like for my mom to try and watch an Avengers movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like so- you're going to do something, but I don't, I don't know what it is or when you do it. <laughs> exactly. Um, are 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 you familiar with Blondie? Had you I, heard of Blondie, them? I do know. Yeah, I didn't know she was so involved in this history. Yeah, she. So she p- 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 puts out Heart of Glass kind of right around this time, and she becomes f- f- friends with. Fab Five Freddy. Uh, and then he kind of jokingly is like, hey, you should write a song about me. And then she does like two years later. Yeah. And and when when she shows him the song, he's like, wait, this is a j- 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 joke, right? She's like, nope, this is my this is my new song. This is going to be <laughs> one of the videos played on MTV. It's first day. <laughs> yeah, I think they said it was like number 48 on, yeah. on, on that day, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then that song is then uh, sampled uh, by or kind of sampled by KRS one who I, I don't think we met in this book. Um, but uh, I was going to say fun fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, KRS lived in the apartment building a block down and he was too young to go to a- 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 any of C- 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 Cool Herc's parties, mm-hmm. but he could h- h- hear him. Oh. And so he would, he would have his window open. Um, but he KRS samples that the the rapture song. I it's it's not not that he samples it, but he uses the tune of that that first that first like section of the song there. So it's like, yeah, Blondie is not really hip hop she's not yeah. really into the whole scene she's fascinated b- 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 mm-hmm. by it but uh it like still her and that whole b- 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 band's involvement is influential yeah to people which is which is neat so yeah i didn't know she was going to be in it mm-hmm. uh, or like the talking heads and the tom tom club yeah. come up i really liked in the um graffiti side of things where they run into keith herring yeah that was that was neat <laughs> yeah did did you recognize basquiat that's a name i know i've heard but like i can't quantify what this person has done you've you've probably seen some of his his artwork and stuff okay like that. but yeah i mean it's the same thing where they that he starts out as a graffiti writer uh and eventually makes it big in the the art scene um and then i i think he i think if i'm not mistaken they mentioned that oh, okay. basquiat was the dj in blondie's music video for yeah sure if i'm not mistaken okay all right i'm looking at this and there's something that, this does look familiar this style yeah yeah it's a lot of very like abstract stuff is what he's doing there but yeah keith herring is in 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 the book yeah related searches andy warhol keith herring and roy lichtenstein Mm -hmm. uh i i do i do want to say that i i i noticed that this book focuses mainly on the music side of hip-hop and 
both graffiti and be bullying, especially. Uh, get the short, short, short end of this of the stick, unfortunately, in this book. We don't really learn anything about b-boying. I think we see a couple of them. I, I, I think we see uh, Frosty Freeze in there. I think he's the one that they show Blondie. Uh, and then I think he, so. Yeah. Yeah. But like, that's about it. Like that. That that's all we see. And then on the graffiti so- side of things, like there's really no mention of Tacky One Eighty Three, who is uh, basically the p- 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 person who started tagging. Like he oh. was the one that started it all. Um, there's there's a couple p- <laughs> people who. Uh, are often pointed to as well. Maybe it was this other person, but it's it's usually tacky, and he's not mentioned. But we see his name on the wall, like in the back, go around. But it 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 skips straight to Lee and and Freddy Fab Five. So. It, which just for my love of graffiti yes. and just like I, I'm a graphic de- 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 designer, so I really love all the le- 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 all the letter forms. I it just it stinks to see it like it, it's barely even mentioned. Oh, that being said, though, graffiti is not exclusive to hip hop. Mm hmm. Um, that that I think is something to be noted. They mention the four elements of hip hop, though I don't think they explicitly mention of like, hey, hip hop is made of four <laughs> elements or like four basic, you know, parts. Yeah. Um, but those are graffiti, breaking, emceeing, and DJing. Mm-hmm. Um. But the graffiti side of things is, you know, it's not exclusive to yeah. hip hop. That was also big in the punk scene and and, mm-hmm. and, and, st- and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it's 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 a major p- 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 part of how hip hop got started, right? Like all, uh, Keith, both Keith Herring and Basquiat both got started as graffiti r- 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 writers. And that's how they made a name for themselves. And then, uh, you know, e- e- even people uh, that they don't mention in this book, like Scene or, 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 um, da, 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 or, or, da, 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 canvas i can sell this for a lot of money (laughs) Mm -hmm. which a lot of people will be like well then that's not graffiti and i tend to agree with them but it's this idea of like these people are all just struggling and wanting to find some way to make money and make it fast and yeah these these paintings that some of them started as just bullshit like i'm just gonna write my name on this thing or i'm just gonna make up this little little character just like i ended up being like hey i will pay you two thousand dollars for a a painting of that and they're like uh yeah sure why not that sounds amazing right Mm -hmm. um so it's yeah it's fun stuff and i don't i don't mean to say bullshit as in like oh graffiti is bull it's it's not but like mm-hmm. it, some of it didn't really have a meaning behind it like it it, it, it was just mm-hmm. like this is just what i do like i i just yeah. happen to write my name on this stuff and it looks neat when i'm waiting for the the terrain and i can see hey that's me that's my name i did that yeah you that's know? cool and i think it's important to like if you love a piece of art and you you Support. would want to have it in your home and you would yeah. want to pay the artist for their work. And if you're an artist, like, you know, go out there and make money doing what you love. Yeah. 
Exactly. So. Uh, did you have anything else that kind of stood out to you that you wanted to talk about with this book? I don't know, because it's this is very different than any other book that I have read, because it is just straight history, and all of it is new to me, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's a lot to take in and there's not very much that sticks out because it's all kind of like like it's all real. It's all kind of on one playing field for me. And yeah. I'm trying to like pay attention and try and get a handle on everything that's happening. I liked all the clothes. I did. Let's right. talk about the art for a little bit because I do sure. really like the art and how it looks absolutely of that time right down to the panel structure. It is a really traditional just simple squares and rectangles, like mm -hmm. really straightforward panel structure. Yeah, I, I, I think that was a fantastic choice. Yeah. At, the, at the end of this volume, they have a couple, like, I, I guess you could say short stories or like addendums. Yeah, to this whole some thing. nice pinups, just these nice portraits of various artists. And those become much more recent. There's like, there's a Snoop Dogg in there. There's a Beastie Boys yeah. in there. Um. But they, they have this thing about, like, hip-hop and comics. And, mm -hmm. like, it, oh, the yes, yes. And relationship between yeah. the, the, those things. And, yeah, there are a lot of rappers who have nicknames based off of comic book yeah. characters. You see a lot of, of Wu-Tang doing that. Um, in fact, in the Iron Man movie, yes, in I, 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 Iron Man one, I b b believe when he's coming back from the cave, if I might, I might have the wrong scene, but there is a a, a scene when they're on a jet and it it has a uh, ghost face killer playing it in the back g g g g g g g g g g g around, and his nickname is. I, 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 Iron Man, 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 Man. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you have uh, MF Doom, who has an alter a a a a alias Victor v v v v Vaughn. Mm -hmm. uh, so th there's there's all sorts of stuff like it. Yeah, so I I, I think that mixed with the like, yeah, they like they love cartoons and cereal and that's why they get the like hey my name is this and i'm here to say blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah like that is the culture like that mm -hmm. that is how this all gets started they they watch cartoons they read comics they they do this stuff and they're they're pulling from the, that stuff to make these larger than life characters right yeah yeah and it talks about how there's like costumes and groups and team ups and rivalries and alter egos and insignias and symbols and all of that yeah. and like complicated canonical history i'm like this does track this it, absolutely it makes really sense. is yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so i i think the stuff like that is fun to to see uh what was i there was one more thing i was gonna say on the comic book side of things oh i you we maybe mentioned the like rivalries and yeah and stuff like that some of that stuff is legitimate like it it was fucked up that they stole the rhyme book and yeah the, you can get into beef over territory and fights and all, all sorts of stuff mm -hmm. but at the same t time like the the whole thing at the start of it was more of a gimmick, right? Of like, hey, we're gonna act like yeah. we're fighting, but at the end of the day, let's just go smoke. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's like if people think there might be a fight breaking out at this party, they're actually more likely to come to the party. Right? Yeah. Like, oh man, that's really ha it's happening there. Like, that's the place to be, right? If <laughs> if something like oh, someone's about to go down between them and them, and like, oh g g goodness, right? And it, it builds the hype and it makes it something that like, yeah, I want to be at this party. I want to be at this club mm -hmm. to, to, you know, do this thing. And that's even what Rick Rubin was doing where he'd make his dad yeah. come in and, and arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> like st Stuff like that is like there is this this aspect to hip hop especially early hip hop where it, there mm -hmm. is this performance right yes. there is this uh like on stage skit and and routine um 
And we start to see a li 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 little bit, bit of it when they start making r r r r records and they're like, all right, now that you guys are making some money, you kind of mm -hmm. need to think about your image. And they go yeah. from like, here's what they first lo yes, looked like. And I it's love like that panel. T-shirts and <laughs> hoodies. And then it's like, here's what they looked 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 like after that and they have on like biker outfits yes. and stuff like that it's so it's so funny um but like that that I, I think is then eventually where run dmc comes back in because it continued to go down that direction where it's like hey we're gonna have these super flamboyant outfits that are just super over the top and then when run dmc c c comes b b b back in it's like nah we're gonna be in track suits and a d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d like we're we're taking it back to square one uh which i i don't think happens until volume three in mm. in, in this uh this stuff here so good stuff though it's fun yeah it's fun yeah. to, to re read this book and then like I, I, I when so when i read the book i was making the playlist as i read the book oh nice yeah so i would be like all right i here's the correct artist but they don't have a anything from this time period maybe <laughs> i can do th this then you know so, yeah, I, I tried to k k k k k keep it as close to the time period as i could mm -hmm. if it, if it if it was just like they mentioned so, someone uh and then if they mentioned a specific song and stuff like yeah. that i put i put that stuff in there as well as uh there was the scene where the guy was like hey let's make a compilation record of all yeah. of the songs that they're using uh, so that we can sell that record and yeah. we'll be the ones to make the money i i put all all of the ones they listed um on because there's that one panel where they meant like here's six yeah. of the the, so so the songs that they they did um mm -hmm. yeah out of all the songs listed in the book i think there were four i had ever heard of and it was uh one of the samples listed is another one bites the dust we all, yeah, all know this right. of course and then i knew rapper's delight Heart of Glass and Genius of Love by the Tom Tom Club. There that was go. all I had. There so I liked listening to the playlist. I didn't get very far in it. and But like based on what I'm reading on the page, everything sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the sound of everything. I like that it's back in like synth times. Because just listening to like old synth noises just makes me feel cozy and at home. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so I I did not put another one bites the dust on th 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 there, but that that Thanks was in help. that was in a slew of like here's the one that they let Grandmaster Flash do his thing, and it's like yeah. the seven minute song. So I put that song oh, that nice. made, 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 made on th on there. Uh, so that's what I did with with that one. So uh, yeah. I, I guess for anyone out there l l l l listening t t to this, if you want to find that playlist, if you search Hip Hop Family Tree, I'm sure it will c come up. My Spotify username is Hush315, Hush315. Uh, so if you find that one, that's the one that I made. Okay. Maybe I'll... I'll I'll p p p put the link in the It'd be good. the description of the YouTube vi 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 video here and the podcast it's, as well. And it'll be up on our website too. So it's a very helpful resource. Thank you for giving me all of these yeah. tools to yeah. to understand. Because I'm like, when it gets like, and graffiti's involved, and b boying is involved, I'm like, oh, that's all Kyle things. Yeah, Kyle yeah. goes and loves this stuff. The, that stuff you'll you'll have to like go watch other doc mm. you'll have to go watch wild style or you'll have to go yeah. you know watch something else to be like okay well here it is um uh, here's that stuff because it's not like it's not a song mm -hmm. right i can just mm -hmm. be like hey listen to this but it's like hey here's a documentary yeah here's I'd style like to learn wars more about those. go watch style wars go watch mm -hmm. wild style stuff like that sweet 
Melissa, you have officially learned hip hop. I I did. I started. I might be able to answer trivia questions now in the future. Some of them. Which is all I want out of life. Once once you start to get into volumes two and three, that's when you'll get to the NWA, Dr. Jare stuff. Then you'll be like, oh, that's easy. Okay, I see. Yeah. Another thing about this book is that I don't. Like it, some of the names I recognize, but I don't know if these people looked like in the seventies. I'm excited to, if I keep reading, getting to a point where I recognize the people that this artist is drawing, yeah. and I get to really see, oh, that looks just like them. Because yeah. I'm sure these all are accurate, but I don't know. Yeah. I just have to keep Fairly reading accurate. until I get to somebody I know. Yeah, it's fun stuff, though. Mm-hmm. Fun stuff. Uh, let's see, Melissa. If yes. you could recommend anything oh, else to someone who might have liked this, what what do you oh. think uh, they would like? I, I obviously mentioned Wild Style, uh, which is the movie that they're t- 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 talking about making in this book. You guys should go watch that. I also just mentioned Style Wars. Yeah, just a second ago, which is a documentary, uh, more on the early on the early graffiti scene, and I think it's available on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. It's a not very good quality one, but it is all up there on YouTube. It's hard to name something because this is a historic, like a straightforward historical tale. It's like, well, if you like this, you might also like. The rest of human history. Right. You might like the Battle of Normandy. You might know. like uh, being alive and going to a museum. Right. I don't know. I just Googled Keith Haring. That's a delightful Google. Just looking at his stuff makes me happy. So uh, this is my recommendation to you uh, this week and any week when you need to pick me up. Just look at some Keith Haring work. Right. <laughs> um. Let's see, is there anything else I can think of in regards to this? I guess the only thing I would add is what I pitched last week. Go watch The Get Down on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It is uh, like a fictional retelling of early hip-hop. It focuses on all new characters. They're not real people. Uh, But besides hip-hop, like you also see the rise of like uh I, I guess the fall of disco and more voguing and house and, huh. and stuff like that because that's also happening around the same time um I, I think like right right after or like right around and after vietnam there's this big like insurgence of like we need to be american like <laughs> an american is rock and roll Fuck Ugh. disco. We're we're not gonna do this disco thing. Oh, so pe- yeah. people were breaking their disco records. Yeah, there was disco br- demolition br- 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 night, br- 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 burning them. Yeah, and stuff like that. And there were these underground clubs that would still play disco, but to k- 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 kind of make something new or make it. Uh, like it's like yeah like something new something that they could call their their own they would l- l- layer multiple disco songs on mm. top of each other or do the thing where they would sample certain bits and do all of this stuff and they would make uh house music which i think the name comes from the name of the club uh, which was the warehouse, which I believe was in either Chicago or Detroit. I'm blanking huh. on that right now. But yeah, it's like Chicago, Det- Detroit, and New York were is, is where like house and d- 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 disco and <laughs> house and music is. is like one of the number one terms that everybody keeps saying. Like I'm supposed to know what it is, and I sincerely don't. I am very bad at delineating musical genres. <laughs> well, I, I don't have a comic book or something <laughs> that I can point you towards. Um, but I, I, I can show, show you some some house music uh, that'd be like, okay, that's house. 
Yes, yes. I need like a... As opposed to disco and stuff like that. I need like a periodic table of elements to explain different things to me because I just don't have a musical brain and like I can't pick, like I can't sort or categorize or like identify things properly. Like if somebody (laughs) asked me, what kind of music do you like? I just like balk. Uh, Sound... You know, a Spotify playlist for you, number three. <laughs> this is why I listen to so many podcasts, so I don't have to try and explain to people what right. kind of music I like. Because a right. podcast I can describe. That's funny. Good stuff. Um, okay, Melissa, it is your turn to pitch what we are going to be talking about for this next week. Yes, it is pitch time. I have three different historical drama TV series. Okay. More history. Yeah, I thought we'd stay with history for a little bit more. And so these range from pretty straightforward, dramatized, but otherwise like historical tales to uh, a little bit weirder. And I'm going to start with the weird one first. Interesting. Okay. So 10 years ago when Lost was still on the air... I was in a live journal fan community for Lost. Mm-hmm. I promise this leads to something. So I'm still friends with these people years later, and live journal doesn't exist. So now we're all on a Discord and we all talk about stuff there. There you go. Everybody else in that group is obsessed with this show. I think all of, all like, I don't know, a dozen plus of them in there that are actively talking right now have watched the show. Somebody just watched it for the first time and like live posted about it. They're all obsessed with this and I need to know what it is. I need to watch this for myself. This is the terror. Okay. I've heard of this. This was season one is the, about like them disappearing on this like ice ship thing. Something. Yes. Yes. The terror. I believe it's an AMC show and you can watch it on Hulu. Okay. It is a historical speculative fiction anthology series where each season is its own self-contained story. And I think season two just started. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am pitching season one. This is all on Hulu. This is 10 episodes. And this is. Uh, This begins with the Royal Navy's polar explorer ships heading into uncharted territory, seeking the Northwest Passage. The ships are soon stuck, frozen, and isolated, and those aboard must survive the harsh weather conditions and each other while being stalked by an elusive menace. So yeah, it's this uh, scientific exploration ship that's up in like northern canada somewhere i believe and it's like a harsh survival tale which normally i'm not into but everybody loves this thing and there's some sort of mysterious supernatural threat that i believe is connected to the uh native mythologies around that area i don't know very much about it but i'm i'm excited to learn i've heard good things yeah cool that's pitch number one pitch number two is halt and catch fire okay this uh again i'm pitching all of all three series i'm pitching are season one and the, all the first seasons are 10 episodes conveniently nice. this one you can find on netflix i think this is also an amc show i think it is yeah this stars lee pace uh and it is set in 1983 and he plays a former ibm executive who's now working at some other technological corporation And he discovers some sort of a flaw in IBM operations that he can use and exploit. And he wants to make a faster, cheaper PC to dominate the market and like, Mm -hmm. you know, destroy his old company if he can. So it is pitched as a visionary, an engineer and a computer prodigy team up in the dawn of the personal computing age. Awesome. I think the show is pretty well regarded and I just love old technology. Yeah. And Yes, business disaster like technology not as much as you you see <laughs> still love technology <laughs> always, always and and forever. Forever. <laughs> shout out to napoleon dynamite <laughs> yes outstanding and pitch number three uh we were just talking about her queen elizabeth ii i am uh-huh. pitching season one of the crown 
This is a Netflix original series. And this lavish drama chronicles the life of Queen Elizabeth II from the 1940s to modern times. The series begins with an inside look at the early reign of the queen, who ascended the throne at age 25 after the death of her father, King George VI. As the decades pass, personal intrigues, romances, and political rivalries are revealed that play a big role in events that shape the later years of the 20th century. I went through just the basic episode descriptions on Netflix for season one and Churchill's in it. It's about like her ascending the throne and kind of dealing with her, uh, her sister. Now that one is a queen and one is a princess and they're Mm -hmm. not just both princesses anymore. There's an episode that's just all about, there's too much smog in London. What do we do? Okay. (laughs) I'm intrigued by this. Yeah. Like I, you know, the queen is uh, the world's grandma and I'd like to see her in her, her younger years. I'd like to get to know her better. Interesting. Okay. So our pitches are all first seasons, all 10 episodes each. The Terror, Halt and Catch Fire, or The Crown. Interesting. Um, before I say that, I want to mention one more thing that is mm. kind of a recommendation if you ah, like hip-hop p- yeah, yeah. imagery, but also goes in the same vein of what you p- pitched. If you like historical dramas or historical fiction uh mm-hmm. as, and stuff like that mind hunter on netflix oh. uh is a really cool sh- show about uh the people at the fbi who kind of came up with the terminology and c- c- classifications to study serial killers um and it's it's a d- interesting show <laughs> to say the least so go, go check out that if that is your thing mm-hmm. um but okay we have the terror season one halt and catch fire season one and the crown season one what do i want to do uh these are all good ones because i you know i like technology and computers and stuff like that so i want to lean t- towards halt and catch fire mm-hmm. The crown is out of my comfort. I figured it was, but I'd throw it in there in her honor. (laughs) But that also kind of makes me want to pitch it of just Mm -hmm. like, I I, I sometimes like going out of my comfort zone. We've done a couple like romance mangas and stuff on on, on here. And it's always nice to educate myself in something else that I'm, I I don't feel like it would really be my thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, this one is the most factual, and the other ones are we took a couple basic facts or the concept of the time. I don't right. know if Lee Pace is playing a real guy in Halt and Catch Fire. I have no idea. Um, and yeah, then Halt and or not Halt and Catch Fire, the the Terror. I've recently heard good things about, so that one is like, huh? Yeah, I, I've it's hit my radar a few t- yes. t- t- times. Um. You know, it's almost the fall, which means it's almost spoopy t- time, which means I'm going to go with the terror to start <laughs> getting me in the mood. Yes. Uh, and yeah, it's 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 still the summer right now, so it's still hot and humid out. So I think watching a show where they are trapped <laughs> in ice might cool me off. Some, yes, hopefully. this is the perfect time of year. It's starting to get spooky, but it's still hot outside and it will... Kind of, yeah, you're right. It will cool us off watching them being stuck in Arctic Canada. Right, exactly. <laughs> Smart choice. Uh, so, yeah, season one of The Terror yes. is what we will do for this next week. Mm hmm. And I want to say that season two is currently airing. Like I said, I think this is an AMC show, and its subtitle is. Um, infamy like the season one of the the terror doesn't have a subtitle to it but um season two does and it is called uh come on google they just mentioned it on the rooster teeth podcast. yeah it's called um the terror infamy and it is set uh a series of bizarre deaths that haunt a japanese american community during world war ii and george takei is in this one that's right It, it it's about the mistreatment of the yeah. Japanese people, the horrible things we did to them. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a bummer to bring up, but uh, it's important it, stuff. W- and it they would have... be terrifying. I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they've they got were... a 
speculating because they they were like well the first season had almost this supernatural thing yeah. going on in in there so they were wondering if season two was going to do that same it thing seems like it it will have something like uh, the pitch for the series is speculative historical fiction so i imagine yeah. this won't just be maybe it's aliens this time yeah i imagine this won't just be eerie but straightforward like there's got to okay. be something to it oh, okay. i just thought i'd bring it up i think it just cool. started so if you're interested in this and you're like I, c I could use with more george decay in my life which everyone could sure yeah <laughs> he's another one of the grandparents of the world uh you can catch up and go watch him sure sounds good uh we will be back next week for the terror season one melissa where can they find you in the meantime you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And I am at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. Uh, that's where you can stay up to date with all of our shows uh, and all the multitude of podcasts that we have. TheWhatnots.com is our website. You can get much more information there. If you like what we do, uh, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us for as a little as a dollar a month and you mm -hmm. get access to the live streams of this here review show uh, so you can see our, our faces before anyone else does yes uh, exclusive we, faces yeah we also put these e e episodes up early uh, for any of our one dollar patrons uh, at the three dollar tier we have some exclusive content for you all some exclusive episodes of the review show where we've covered everything from the x-files to shrek untold to some <laughs> superman stories it's um, shrek, shrek retold it was I dracula always, untold i always screw it up i always every, every single time uh <laughs> but yeah you guys can go check out that stuff uh and Coming up in a couple weeks here, I think we're going to be doing our first exclusive yeah. episode of the Captain's L L L Log uh, in in which we take personality t t tests to see which Sailor Moon scouts we are. Uh, I Important think that's going to be rid ridiculous <laughs> and a lot of fun. So. Yep. The real soul searching. Join us for this. Exactly. Uh, and we wanted to give a big thank you to the p people at our $5 tier on Patreon. Uh, so thank you to Sam and mm -hmm. Christine for supporting us. Uh, it is crucial. We love you guys a lot because it helps yeah. keep these mics on and these lights and stuff like that. Um, no, it, it actually goes to all of our hosting <laughs> our hosting costs and stuff like that. But that means we can focus on making the podcasts mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So thank you. Thank you for helping us out. That means a lot. Uh, that being said, we will get out of here. This has been episode 72 of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you guys next time. Adios. Bye. Party people in the place to be. Thank you so much for checking out episode 72 of the Whatnots Review Show. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget that I will put the dis the the link to the playlist uh, in the description below here on this. Um, you guys should absolutely go check it out. Uh, let us know who your favorite rapper is or your your favorite old school hip hop song is down in the comments below. In the meantime, go follow our channel. Go like one of the videos that we have. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Y'all know the deal. We'll see you next time. Peace.